Hi, I'm Mr Parker and this is question 6 on the OCR Mechanics 1 paper from January 2009. For more questions on this exam paper, click the link here or check the video description. Question 6. Small parcels are being loaded onto a trolley. Initially the particles are 2.5 metres above the trolley. And part 1 says a parcel is released from rest and falls vertically onto the trolley. And we need to calculate, in part A, the time taken for a parcel to fall onto the trolley. As always, let's start by drawing a diagram. Here is our parcel. And it's going to fall 2.5 metres down to the ground here. So we'll label the 2.5 metres. And there are no other forces acting on this block other than gravity pulling it down. Therefore, we can write down our values for SUVAT. The displacement is 2.5 metres. Initial velocity is 0 metres per second. We don't yet know V. Acceleration is purely due to gravity, so we can say that that is 9.8 metres per second squared. And we don't know the time. So in order to find the time, we need an equation that involves S, U, A and T. The one we want is S equals UT plus half A T squared. Our displacement is 2.5. Because initial velocity is zero, this bit disappears, and we get half times 9.8 t squared. Well, a half times 9.8 is 4.9, so to get t squared, we need to do 2.5 divided by 4.9. Just a little bit of rearranging there. So to get t on its own, all we need to do is square root this. Now, I'm not going to write down the value for t squared, I'm just going to do it in one step. and we get 0 0.714 to three significant figures. In part two, we want the speed of a parcel when it strikes the trolley. Well, this time we're trying to work out V, the final velocity. So we need an equation that involves S, U, V, and A. The one we're looking for is V squared equals U squared plus two A S. Once again, U is zero, so that bit disappears, so we get two times 9.8 times 2.5. Well, 2 times 2.5, that's 5. 5 times 9.8 is like times by 10 and a half in it, so we get 49. So V is going to equal 7 meters per second. In part 2, it says parcels are often damaged when loaded in the way described. So a ramp is constructed down which parcels can slide onto the trolley. The ramp makes an angle of 60 degrees to the vertical and the coefficient of friction between the ramp and the parcel is 0.2. A parcel of mass 2 kilograms is released from rest at the top of the ramp and we need to calculate the speed of the particle after sliding down the ramp. So a lot of marks available for this question, 9 marks, and I think it's really mean because it says an angle of 60 degrees to the vertical. So it's not actually this angle here that is 60 degrees, it's the angle to the vertical. So it's saying this angle here is 60 degrees, making the angle between the slope and the horizontal 30 degrees. Designed to catch you out, that is. So to calculate the speed of the parcel, we're going to first need to know the acceleration of the block down the ramp. In order to find the acceleration, we're going to need to work with the forces that are acting on the block. So I'm going to draw a force diagram over to the right. Remember, our angle between the slope and the ground is 30 degrees. Let's consider the forces acting on the block. We've got weight coming downwards. That's going to be 2g. We've also got friction acting on the block. And because we know the block is moving, that is going to be limiting friction. So I'll call it f lim. We know mu is 0.2. And because friction is acting on the block, that means we are going to be interested in the normal contact force, which we'll call R. So we've got three forces acting on the block, weight, friction, and the normal contact force. Because we need the normal contact force to calculate limiting friction, we'll start by resolving perpendicular to the slope. Into the slope, we've got a component of this 2G weight force, and that is going to be 2G cosine 30 degrees. 
out of the slope we've got the normal contact force it's in the opposite direction so we'll say that is minus r and in a perpendicular direction the block isn't moving so we can say that mass times acceleration is zero so then r equals 2g cos 30 now we could work that out but we would get a decimal because cos 30 gives us a third so we're just going to leave it for now as 2g cos 30 because we're not interested in the value of the normal contact force next we'll resolve parallel to the slope we have a component of the weight down the slope and that is going to be 2g sine 30 we have limiting friction working in the opposite direction so I'll put minus F lim and that's going to equal mass times acceleration so that will be 2a we can substitute in for the value of limiting friction if you remember that limiting friction is the coefficient of friction multiplied by the normal contact force we get 2g sine 30 minus the coefficient of friction 0.2 multiplied by the normal contact force which is 2g cosine 30 equals 2a to find a we need to divide through by 2 however before I do that I'm just going to simplify things a little because I know that sine 30 is a half and 2 times a half is 1 so this bit here just becomes g 0 0.2 times 2 that's going to be minus 0 0.4g cos 30 and I'm going to divide through by the 2. So now I'll put that into my calculator. And I get an acceleration of 3.20 and so on. Now that I know the value of the acceleration, I can start thinking about my equations of motion. So I'll write down SUVAT. To find the displacement, I'm interested in the whole distance down the ramp. Now, I know the vertical height is 2.5. If I call the length of the ramp L, I can say that cos 60 degrees is adjacent over hypotenuse, which is 2.5 over L. Remember, cos 60 is just a half, so to get L on its own, I'm going to be doing 2.5 divided by cos 60, which is like 2.5 divided by a half, which gives me 5 metres. If you need to, use a bit more space to work this out. I'm pushed for space, so I've done it all in one go. So my displacement is going to be 5 metres. My initial velocity is 0 metres per second. I don't yet know final velocity. Acceleration I worked out a minute ago. That was 3.20 and so on. And the time I don't know. So I'm looking for an equation of motion that involves S, U, V and A. I need to use v squared equals u squared plus 2as. u is 0, so that's going to disappear. And I'm going to get 2 times 3.20 and so on multiplied by 5. Remember, I've got the value for the acceleration still stored in my calculator here. So I need to times that by 10, which gives me 32.0 and so on. So to get V, all I need to do is square root that. And I get 5.66 to three significant figures.